In the spirit, in the spirit, in the spirit, there is no gender difference. Do you know that? Because in heaven, there is no gender difference. Is it true? Christ said, these shall be like angels, they will not marry or give a marriage. In heaven, there is no gender difference. On earth, there is gender difference, that's for biological reasons. But in spiritual sense, there is no gender difference. Can you say amen? amen. So having, having said that, let's call one of our daughters to come and teach us. Amen. Can you praise God for Taylor? Yeah. Come Taylor, all yours. Yeah. And they didn't have the Holy Spirit like we do today, so they were trying to hear the voice of God. They couldn't hear him, so they were trying to do whatever they could in order to get from him or to receive from him. This is still a prevalent mindset in the church today, that in order to get an answer, we need to fast in order to get God to do something for us. But that's not how things are anymore. There is actually nothing that we can do that can twist God's arm. It has already been done. We don't need to fast for healing. It's already been paid for. First Peter 2.24 says that, um, oh my gosh, by his stripes we are healed. First Peter 2.24. So it's already done. It's already fully paid for. God's not just going to suddenly pour out more healing than he already has. In Hebrews 10.10 it says we are sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once and for all. This isn't a continuous thing that we have to keep asking him to pour out more and pour out more. It's already done. There's nothing that we can do that's going to affect God and get him to pour out more of his healing on us. He already sent his son for the propitiation for our sins, and he died to give us remittance of our sins and for our healing. So if God has already done everything for us, and he already sent everything, then why do we need to fast? My answer would be is that we're not fasting for God in order to get God to do something. More so, we fast for ourselves, to get ourselves to do something. That's right. When Jesus is Lord of my life, he is the Lord of every area of my life. Mind, body, soul. To live a victorious Christian life is to have Jesus as the Lord of my mind, body, and soul. Amen. Um, when I have an open mind, then I'm connected to God. Jesus is the Lord of my mind, then I have a connection to him, and my mind is open to what he's saying. When I have a victorious body, then my body is surrendered to him, and it's physically an instrument of righteousness for him to use. And when my heart and my spirit is surrendered to God, I am strong in the spirit, and I have a soft heart to what God is saying. Good. Yeah. So when my mind is not victorious, and when my, not, when my mind is not submitted to God, I am all over the place. My emotions go up and down, every day is a roller coaster, there's no knowing what's going to happen. I can you know, wake up on the wrong side of the bed, I'm irritable, anxious, I just can't focus on anything, I'm forgetful, I'm just caught up in all of that. But fasting sets my mind on God. Romans 8, 4 through 6. The righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. For they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh, but they that are after the Spirit do mind the things of the Spirit. For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. When I'm fasting, I am controlling my thoughts, I'm controlling my emotions and my actions. When I'm fasting, I am, my eyes are open, I am more aware, and my ears are open to what is happening in the Spirit. I think during the day so often we just go through our day. You know, we wake up, make the breakfast, go to work, and we just kind of float on through, or on an autopilot, or like, hey, just get this day done, and I can go home, and I can sit down, you know. We're just, like, we're in this zone. But if you want to start truly living, get into fasting. Every moment is fresh. Amen. Your eyes are wide open. You are so much more receptive to what the Holy Spirit is doing in every moment of your day. The days go on really slowly when you're fasting, and your eyes are wide open to whatever God is doing. So fasting is training yourself to listen to God, to draw on God, and to be tuned in from God, and this way our mind is focused on Him. When my body is not victorious in Christ, when my body is not fully surrendered to God, that's when I'm having bad habits. That's when I find myself you know, doing the things that I don't even want to do, like Paul said in Romans 7.15. But when I'm fasting, I am not acting on my urges. I'm training my body to listen to me, not to whatever it feels like doing, but to truly listen to what I want it to do. 
This is an excellent way to overcome habits. That's good. Amen. There's a, an awesome website that I like to go on. It's called Fight the New Drug, and it's a group of young people who are teaming together and saying, hey, pornography is not cool and it's actually ruining our relationships. And they give articles and scientific studies to show the negative effects of porn on the brain and on relationships and on society. And I read one of the articles on this website, and it was these young people, and they're not, it's not even a Christian website, these young people were saying, when I fast, I'm able to overcome my porn addiction. Wow. If my porn addiction gets out of hand, he said, I will just start fasting, and when I can control what I eat, I can control the rest of my life. Amen. And yeah, one of the guys said he had great success doing that. He cut a week from his diet, and he said, I'm going vegetarian until I can, until I can smash this habit. And he said it worked, and he would recommend it for other people. So other people were reading this article, and they were like, wow, it really works. You know, if you can gain control in that area, you gain control of everything else. So when you, and so when you do deprive your body of food, you know, you're saying, hey, I'm not going to eat this day. Your body's naturally going to scream at you. It's going to be like, I'm dying, feed me. In reality, it takes 40 days without food for your body to die. So you are not dying. <laughs> um, actually, even non-believers fast because it has health benefits. I hear of lots of non-believers who are like, oh, yeah, Chris fasting today. I'm like, oh, I didn't know he was so spiritual. No, he's not. It's just there's, there's <laughs> there are health benefits to this, too. It's a refreshing of your entire system. And Linda was saying that she learned in school that it also balances your emotions. There's a physical, scientific way that it actually just cleanses and balances everything. So when I start to get hungry, I just remember when Jesus uh, said that man does not live on bread alone, okay. but on every word that comes out of the mouth of the Father. So Jesus is my food during that time. When I'm on fast, my family's you know, having a meal upstairs, but then I can go downstairs and I can have my meal. The, the word of God is the bread of life and it fills me up. So I rely on God to give me the strength and the energy that I need for that day. Yeah. And my parents started to notice too. And they're like, why is she never eating? Is she okay? <laughs> and my mom was like, no, no, no. She just likes the effects. <laughs> and they were like, oh, what are the effects? And I'm like, okay. So I get to do a little testimony there too. <laughs> Thirdly, when my spirit is not victorious, then my heart is hard to God. So when God is not the Lord of my life, I am shut down in my heart, my spirit is not strong, rather I am just, uh, my heart is hardened and I am just going off of what I feel like. And when my heart is soft, it is open to receive from God. I believe that fasting is a spiritual strengthening as well, as well as it is for the mind and the body, it also is very evident in my spirit. It is being built up in the faith, much like praying in tongues. Some biblical examples of fasting. Uh, in 2 Chronicles 20, verse 3, an army was coming against the kingdom of Judah. This is an Old Testament example, but I am going to throw it in there anyways. Uh, King Jehoshaphat declares a fast for everybody in the country. They all are going to inquire of the Lord because there's this army coming and they're like, oh no, what are we going to do? We're going to inquire of the Lord. And this is much like we see people using fasting from the New Testament. They set themselves apart. They want to hear from God. They seek him. They seek his direction for the next move. And the spirit of the Lord came upon Jehaziel, which is one of, um, one of the other Levites. And he spoke an encouragement to all of Judah, telling them that they are surely going to win the battle. And then jumping into the New Testament in Acts 10, verse 30. This is uh, around Acts 10 is where we see the story of Cornelius, a Jewish, Jewish, Jewish centurion. You know what I'm saying. An officer in the Roman army is responsible for 100 soldiers. That's what a centurion was. I didn't know what that was. I thought it was like one of those half horse, half man things. It's not. It's, a, <laughs> it's, a, it's an army official. Anyways, so this is. <laughs> that's his. Well, I don't know what that is called. Anyways. <laughs> So anyway, this dude, this Jewish Shen Centurion, was fasting. <laughs> this guy was fasting, and the angel of the Lord appeared to him. And the angel brought him a message that he was to send for Simon Peter, who was chilling in Joba. And Simon Peter arrived at Cornelius' house, and Cornelius and all of his friends were just ready to hear what Simon has to say. And Simon tells of God's will to reach all people, both the Jews and the Gentiles. And then we hear in, um, 10, in Acts 10, verse 2, 
that Cornelius was a devout man, and he feared God with all his house. He gave much alms to the people, and he was praying always. And we hear again in 10.22, he was a just man that feared the Lord, and he was of good report. And then in verse 30, Cornelius was fasting when he received this revelation from God. He had a visitation from this angel. And it doesn't tell us how long his fast was for, or what he was all fasting, or, but we were just told that this event happened four days prior to the arrival of Simon in his house. So Cornelius loved God very much. He set himself apart for God to fast and to seek God. And he was probably fasting for a certain reason, and either way, something happened. So fasting is not twisting God's arm to get him to do something for us, but fasting opens our eyes and ears to what God is doing and what he is saying. It makes us more sensitive to the Spirit. And after Cornelius fasted, he received major revelation. And then in Acts 13, verse 2 to 4, uh, we pick up where Saul and his friends are just hanging out and having like a little worship party there in Antioch. And um, at this time, the people were growing in their prophetic gifts and they were rising up as teachers. So there's Barnabas and Simeon and all these other Jews. And it says in verse 2 that they ministered to the Lord and fasted. And the Holy Ghost said, Separate from me Barnabas and Saul for the work where I have called them. So they were ministering to the Lord and they were fasting. And then they heard from God. They were setting themselves apart for God. They didn't just go up a normal day, you know, working in the field or fishing or whatever they were doing. They were intentionally getting together as a group and they were ministering to the Lord. They were fasting. They were abstaining from food for a purpose. They didn't just give a meal. And while they were fasting, they received revelation from God. Was the purpose of the fast to ask God what his next plans were? The scripture doesn't say the purpose or the plan of the fast. We don't know if they had a specific condition that they were looking to God for. But what is clear is that God spoke to them in his time. And he gave them very clear direction. The scripture does not say that they had a feeling they should separate Barnabas and Saul. Rather, it says, the Holy Ghost said, separate them. Yeah. It was a very clear indication from the Holy Ghost. It wasn't just a, oh, maybe we should separate them. That was clear. Sure. And in verse 3 and 4, when they had fasted and prayed, then they laid their hands upon them and they sent them away. And they, being sent forth by the Holy Ghost, departed. And then they went to all these other places. They went to, and God was just opening up all these doors for them to minister. They were in the synagogue, and the scribes and the, the Pharisees even invited them to speak. So God was just opening up these doors. And in verse 46 of Acts, uh, Acts 13, we see that Paul and Barnabas were waxed bold. They were just pumped up. They were filled with the Holy Ghost. <laughs> and even after they endured much persecution, they were stoned, they were threatened, and they fled from the city. But they were filled with joy, and they were filled with the Holy Ghost. This is the kind of crazy faith that we can live in. Yes. These guys were just doing whatever and going wherever. No matter where they went, they were just welcomed. Paul is stoned, he's dragged outside the city in Acts 14, 19. Then he just jumps up and continues to minister. He goes to the next city the next day. He's just filled with joy all the time. So then, is fasting doing works? In Titus 3, verse 5, it says that not by works of righteousness, which we have done, but according to his mercy, he saved us. By the washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Ghost. And again in Galatians 2, 16, knowing that a man is not justified by the works of the law, but by the faith in Jesus Christ. Even we have believed in Jesus Christ that we might be justified by the faith of Christ, not by the works of the law, for by the works of the law shall no flesh be justified. And that's what Esther was saying this morning. We don't work to be a good person, to do Sunday school. We don't work to get our salvation. Our works are about living a surrendered life. But the work has already been done through Christ. In Hebrews 4.10 it says, The works of the law are done, but we do not have to work in, to enter into this relationship. It says in Hebrews 4.10, he that has entered into his rest, he has ceased from his own works, as God did from his. When we enter that relationship with God, there's no works there. We cease from our works. We don't have to do all these works in order to enter a relationship, in order to be saved, in order to be good enough. The works that I do are not for God. But 
but rather they are for me. The works benefit others because they can see Christ, they see him in me, they see him glorifying me, it's the stuff that I do, it does matter. But it's not to get me saved, it's not to earn something with God, I'm already saved, I'm already his child. The works that I can do are just my actions that other people will see Christ in me. They'll see him glorified. I glorify him in the things that I do. And they also benefit me. When I take steps toward God, I'm being strengthened. I'm being built up in faith. So when I'm planning a fast, I pre-decide with the Holy Ghost what my time is going to be. It's like signing a mortgage contract. You determine everything beforehand. If you just kind of make it up as you go, you're going to get hungry at lunchtime and you're going to eat it. <laughs> but if you say, hey, this is my fast day, I'm going to fast until this time, I'm going to fast until whatever, this is what I'm fasting. And you predetermine it out beforehand. What kind of fast, how long it's going to be. And I purposely plan it out with Jesus beforehand. And I do whatever I feel in my spirit that he's asking me to do. It's not only an excellent way to connect to Jesus, but also an excellent way to increase in spiritual and personal discipline. I feel it in my spirit when it's time to fast. It's like, oh man, I could really use that today. It's like, oh, I just love doing that. <laughs> so if I feel that and I'm like, I'm, I need to go for this. I'm going to do this. Like, I, I really am feeling called to fast right now. If I'm, you know, we're having a really good breakfast or something, I just have my meal anyways, I can actually feel that while I'm eating. Ooh, probably should be fasting today. And then if I eat lunch anyway, then it's like, ooh, I can really feel it. It's like something needs to happen. So I actually will, it, that, that kind of feeling doesn't really go away until I'm like, hey, you know what? I'm going to do this. So then I set that time apart. And uh, yeah, if one day seems like a lot at the beginning, just do a meal. No, just a meal here or there. Or just do like the, um, just do meat, uh, fast meat. Or like da a Daniel fast in Daniel 1 12. Uh, Daniel says he just ate only fruit and vegetables. And there's many different kinds of fasts, but the key is to let the Holy Spirit lead you in that, and not to just try to come up with something on your own, but allow the Holy Spirit to lead you and, and be in that while you're planning that with him. So, the effects of fasting in my life have been very, very dramatic, and I just can't help but talking about them. Um, if anybody's talked to me in the past while, you'd hear me just like talking about fasting all the time. Um, it's something that I didn't really know a lot about, that you know you don't really hear a lot about anymore. But um, when I first started fasting, it was really a battle for me. You know, my, my urges were really strong, they were really loud, they were like, oh, I don't want this, I don't want this. Um, and I didn't, I had a lot of negative effects, you know, I would get headaches, um, I would get sick, and I don't know what that was about. But I just kept pushing through and pushing through and overcoming that. And after I had overcome that, and now, now fasting has become a normal part of my life, um, it has really unleashed a new world for me. And I've seen a lot of really positive benefits in my life. Um, I'm much more connected to God in my mind. My mind is completely focused on Him all the time. The things that used to worry me, you know, they don't worry me anymore. I'm not like constantly caught up with this. I'm not kind of numb, numb and going through my day and I'll wake up, eat breakfast, go to, go to work, or go to school, and I come home. It's not, it's not a mind-numbing life anymore. My, my eyes have been opened, and I'm, I'm awakened to this. And it was just from fasting. I didn't change anything else. It's just I started introducing fasting into my, into my walk with God, and all of a sudden my eyes are just open, and I'm like so focused. I'm really, really excited about God. I have so much passion for Him. My, my heart and my spirit is so connected to Him now. Um, I feel like I have more strength in my body to resist any sort of temptation. Um, I, I truly feel like, the, like I have control, like God is the Lord of my life, and I'm not a victim anymore to the things that I feel like doing, to the urges, to the desires, the temptations. I, that doesn't bother me anymore. I'm, I'm not struggling to fight to keep myself you know, in line. It's just, it just flows now. Um, I have much more confidence. I, I, I've experienced discipline in every area of my life. I definitely have more of a conqueror attitude now, and I also have a love connection to Jesus. Hallelujah. It's not so much about like me trying to do fasting, but it's like, I just fast because I love him. And I just love how I feel when I'm fasting, and I love how I feel after I fast, and I just, I just love having that connection. 
being able to just throw off everything that's, that was keeping me back, you know, the stress of life and busyness and the distractions and everything, just throwing that away and being able to just focus on him. I just feel this flow all the time. It's like I'm addicted to it. I'm like, oh, I want more of this. This is awesome. So I'm not even phased by life and, and nothing can really get me down. My, my thinking is so clear because it's so focused on heaven and I'm just undistracted. I'm just focused and I can't even be anything. Like I've heard him so long. I don't even, I'm not even there. I don't operate there. I'm just like connected to heaven. It's so cool. I'm just, I have some time, I think. So I'm just gonna share a little testimony about like once this stuff has started happening to me and I'm more focused on God, I'm not focused on just trying to make it through my day. I'm at university, right? And I'm now I'm in tune with the spirit. Not even this isn't even a fasting day. I'm just I had been fasting for the last week. I'm just walking through university and it's the first day of a new semester. And, Remember when you were in school and the first day is kind of like, oh, this is the day, you know, you've got to choose where you sit because that's where you sit for the whole year. So make sure you sit next to your friend because you cannot switch, you know, people are like creatures of habit. So I always want to make sure that I get a good spot. So when I walk into the, into the class, I'm asking the Holy Spirit, who am I going to sit by this semester? And I'm walking through and I come to the front and there's a lady with a hijab and that's the head covering that the Muslim ladies wear. I'm like, Ooh, all right. So I like, sit with her. I've never had a friend with a hijab before, and I always wanted to ask, you know, like, why do you wear it? What does it mean to you? Like, is it difficult to wear it? Do you get made fun of? Like, what's what's that about? Like, how do you put it on? Like, I have all these questions, right? So I'm like, oh, first friend with hijab, awesome. So I go and sit next to her, and we just start talking, and um, class starts. So we didn't get much after, but then I was just felt, I was like, I need to ask her to get coffee. So after class, I was like, Are you busy right now? She's like, I have an hour break. I'm like, me too. Do you want to grab coffee? She's like, sure. So we sit down and we start talking. I was like, tell me about your job. Like, what does it mean to you? And she she started talking and telling me, well, you know, my parents are Muslim and, and they're really strict and they really want me to wear it. But if it was my choice, I actually wouldn't wear it because I don't like all these rules. And I'm like, oh, okay, tell me more, right? And she was kind of telling me how she was raised and how she's been going to school and she didn't really feel fulfilled in her parents' religion. So she came to university and she was taking these philosophy courses. And this kind of teaches you about you know, the existence of God and, and how the world works and to really question everything. And she thought, you know, I'm going to find the point there. This is what she was telling me in coffee. And she said, but I'm still not, I'm not fulfilled here either. You know, I've been taking these philosophy courses for three years. I've almost done my degree. And I'm not satisfied. I'm not fulfilled. This isn't... She said, I'm having an existential crisis. I'm having a crisis of why I exist. And I just got to pour God's love on her. And she was so receptive. She was so open. And then her boyfriend came. And her boyfriend was asking me questions. And he was like, wait, you're saying that God sacrificed himself for us? Really? And I got to just share with him the gospel. So God's just opening doors and he's bringing to me people of peace because I'm tuned into his spirit. I'm not about my business anymore. I'm about my father's business and I'm listening for what he has to say. And he's opening these doors for me to minister to people. And, and they just said, I said, isn't there love in your religion? They said, not like you're talking about. We don't have love like you're talking about. <laughs> and I just heard in my spirit, ask him about his right knee. I'm like, give me knee pain. <laughs> and he's like, actually, yeah. And I got to pray for him. He got healed right there in the cafe. <laughs> and I had never been used by God like that before. And I'm like, what is going on? Like, this is awesome. I could do this every day. This is so cool. I felt so filled in that moment. I'm like, I don't even need to sleep ever again. That was amazing. <laughs> So I'm just like, this is my life now, and this is just what I expect because I'm just hearing from him. He's opening these doors, and I'm just able to walk in the fullness of what he has for me and, and just to walk in his plan because I'm so aware of what he has for me. In the Old Testament, the writers were looking forward to the day that they could hear God's voice like this. They were looking forward to the day where the law would be written in their hearts, but now we're living in it. Yes, amen. In the Old Covenant, the people would act would, they would try to fast to get something from God and to get God to do something for them. And it was like an act of desperation. But in the time that Jesus was on earth, the disciples had Jesus with them. So they didn't need to fast because everything was already there, right there with them. After he ascended, though, the fasting began once again. And now we don't have to fast in order to get God to do something for us. 
because he's already done it all. We fast to hear his voice, to receive that revelation from him, and to crucify our flesh, to soften our hearts. A hard heart is not receptive to what the Holy Ghost is saying, but the fasting will actually soften your heart towards God and open your eyes to what he is saying. Putting away the flesh opens up the opportunity for God to become Lord in every area of your life. So a good time to fast would be if you're feeling stuck in your spiritual walk and you want to pump it up a notch. I would challenge you to take this on and you will see the results. If you're having a difficult time controlling your emotions, if you feel like your life is a roller coaster and you never know what today is going to bring, that would be an awesome time to start implementing something as simple as a one meal fast or a dining fast or whatever. I know that you will notice the effects of fasting in your life immediately. Actually, the first few times, I didn't feel the effects. I really had to push through. The first few times that I fasted, I got really sick. And that was the enemy trying to stop me from experiencing what God had for me. And I'm like, you know what? I'm going to fast anyways. You know, I'd be out on the couch. I'd be getting nauseous. I'd be all i just push through. And now I have this amazing victory. So God is not asking you to starve yourself because he likes to see you suffer. That's not it at all. <laughs> The only reason that he would be calling us to fast is because he has something for us. Amen. He's calling us to a deeper place of intimacy that can only be reached through sacrifice and the crucifixion of the flesh of laying our lives down and saying, hey God, what do you have for me? So we don't fast for God in order to get God to do something. We fast for ourselves, to get ourselves to do something. Amen. And when Jesus is Lord of my life, he's the Lord of every area. Amen. A victorious Christian life has victorious in mind, body, spirit, an open mind to God, a surrendered body to God, and a soft heart to God. Thank you. Thank you. Is that awesome? Yeah! Is that awesome?